And so, um, so just so you know that when uh, it gets, you know, when Zoom sends me the link, I will put it on YouTube and then I'll put a link um, to today's note lecture. Usually it'll be um, down here after everything. So if today's we're on module two, it'll be something like fall 2021 video and it'll be right there, all right? But thank you for shouting that out. So, yep, today's going to be impedance and phasers. Um, and I think really, you, you should have seen, you know, in your physics series, you know, resistances, right? You should have seen capacitances and you should have seen inductors and these would be the symbols. Okay. Now with resistors, um, there's no frequency dependence in an ideal resistor. And so it doesn't really matter if it's AC or, or, or a DC signal. And what I mean is a DC signal is like a battery um, when it's still fully charged, okay? Um, and an AC signal is just a sine wave, right? So we have these components um, and sometimes a way to remember them, right? Um, like with a resistor, right? It's just, excuse me. You know, it's got a length and an area and a resistivity, right? And it's just impeding the current flow. Where now, again, this is a little bit harder for me. I'm not a, a great drafts person, but a capacitor, right? It's two parallel plates separated by a dielectric. And an inductor is really a wire wrapped around something, all right? And so these can actually help us remember our, these physical relationships, these impedance and phasers, all right? But without getting into it, right, impedance is a way to analyze circuits with uh, capacitances and inductors in the frequency domain rather than in the time domain that makes it a lot easier to analyze what's going on and even to design what's going on. I'm not going to explain any more than that at this point um, because you know this, this is your first day on impedance and phasers, right? But the rest of EE98 will show you that, all right? So, um, Back to basics, right? A resistance, right? Has an IR, and I'm just gonna draw it from there to there. A capacitance has a current, a capacitive current, or current through the capacitance. And we have inductor current, all right? Now we need to define our voltage drops. All right, um, and the easy way to remember it is, is the plus side goes at the beginning of the arrow and the head of the arrow is where the minus sign is, okay? And I'm just going to write in the voltage drop, all right? So if we have a resistor, right, you know Ohm's law, which is a simplification of, you know, Maxwell's equations. Um, you know, there's our symbol, there's our current.
there's our voltage drop, right? And Ohm's law, right? The voltage across that resistor is the current through that resistor times the resistance itself, all right? Now, I'm just going to introduce a term, right? Is that called impedance, which is just Z, all right? Now that can be Z, R, Z, L for inductor, Z, C for capacitance, but the units is the same as resistance and it's ohms. And the first impedance, of a resistor is just the resistance itself. There, like I said, an ideal resistor has no frequency dependent. It has, has nothing, um, no energy storage. So there's no integral formulation in there. There's no derivative in it. All right, so that's, that's the easy one, all right? I'm not going to define those right yet, but you can just think of it as like, you know, Z is, you know, impedance of a device at a certain frequency, right? So like a sine wave has a frequency, right? So, you know, Suffice to say, all I have to do now, and I'm not even going to define it. There's my impedance Z. I'm going to say the current is going this way. All right. So my defined current is IZ. It drops in that direction. And VZ. Is that definition by the picture VZ equals IZ Z, all right? And again, what the impedance is comes later, but really, and we'll have a review of series in parallel, but all the rules that we do for resistances, like adding resistances in series, adding them in parallel, doing a simple voltage division, right? The same algebraic rules will apply for impedance, except when we go to calculate it, these will be um, complex. Well, pure inductors, pure capacitors are purely imaginary, right? So that might've been a lot right there. So I'll stop it before we get into uh, series, parallel and voltage division. Um, are there any questions? And I'll check the chat now too. Okay, so again, if you have a question, just let me know. So these impedances will have, like I said, imaginary numbers and we'll deal with frequency, right? So we're not in the time domain, but the units will still be ohms, all right? And yes, while we'll add impedances in series, just like resistances in series, we'll, we have to kind of refresh our complex arithmetic. Now, that is an extra step, right? Now we have to deal with complex math, but that is considered a much easier way to look at these circuits than trying to keep things in the time domain, all right? So yeah, hold on, can I give you an example? Well, you're reading my mind. I think we're about to uh, get right into that. Yeah, okay. So, but first we're gonna be, let's, um, 
let's just do some resistors in series. Okay. And I want to know what the R equivalent is from A to B, right? So I have an ohmmeter and I'm going to connect my positive end here and the negative end here. And it's going to, um, what is that ohmmeter going to read, right? Well, let's start, uh, let's, let's derive it. And a way to find resistance is you um, apply a voltage and measure a current, or you apply a current and, and measure a voltage. But mathematically, right, I can just say, I have a voltage here, right? that I'm either measuring or sourcing, and I have a current going in, all right? So now I can kind of, because it's in series, yeah, it's a lot easier to write a voltage loop equation. So it's gonna be minus V, right? Plus V R1 plus V R2. R3, right? So these are our voltages, but now we need to use Ohm's law to turn these into uh, relationships with current, right? So Ohm's law is V of a resistor equals I R. And this I is the same here, 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 anywhere, right? Because it's in series, it doesn't matter where you measure it in that loop you're going to get the same uh, value of current. So let's just substitute that in and rearrange it. So where I get V equals IR1 plus the current times R2 plus the current times R3. I'm going to pull out the currents, right? And the R equivalent is V divided by the current, right? Ohm's law again. And we just get R1 plus R2 plus R3, all right? Now, yeah, impedance-wise, okay? What if, uh, now I'm just drawing these boxes here for impedance. And sometimes people just put, um, they'll put the device that it really is, right? If it's a resistor, inductor, or capacitor. But sometimes you can do boxes. All right. So here's my voltage. Here's my current. Z1, Z2, Z3. Now, again, Z equivalent is really the voltage divided by the current. Now, what's not shown here, though, is it's an AC signal, right, with an amplitude um, phase shift and frequency, all right? So we're about to review what that means, but so when I start using impedance, that means I can't really be at DC, right? I can be very close to it, but I can't be at it because certain things will happen with inductors and capacitors, all right? So now, but it, in this case, it, does, it doesn't matter, right? The current is still the same through all these devices, right? And so, yeah, I'm gonna get, you know, the V, now it's an AC. And some textbooks, they write it with a kind of a bigger symbol, but it, it's just too hard to draw for me, right? So V equals I Z1 plus I Z2 plus I Z3. And again, you get Z equivalent 
equals Z1 plus Z2, Z3. And I should put, that's I times Z1, not I of Z1. So it's I times Z2, I times Z3, right? So we're getting the same thing, all right? Any questions so far? Um, so yeah, David Way asks, are R equivalent and Z equivalent the same? Um, well, they would be exactly the same if Z, this was a resistor, this was a resistor, and that was a resistor. So the relationship is the same, yes. Series resistances, I mean, series inductances add like series, um, I mean, series impedances act like series resistors, all right? And we're gonna see that the parallel relationship, right, as I'll just, we'll just do a quick review, right? So let's say, I want to know what our equivalent is of this. Well, I have my voltage, right? And I have my current, all right? Well, so this current, right, is going to go, it's gonna be split between these three resistors. So that input current, right, is going to be V divided by whatever R, right? Because notice this voltage source in, or we're measuring it, right? It's all the same everywhere on that node. Now, even, now yeah, on a breadboard, there might be very long wires. If you got a wire that's two feet long, well, that wire actually will have some resistance. but you know, in this analysis class, right, we start off with this ideal idea of what the nodes are. So this is, these two areas are nodes. And so if the voltage potential drop from here to here is the same as here to here, is the same from here to here, is the same as there to there. They're all at the same voltage. So that I is gonna be split into three currents. I1 plus I2 plus I3. Now, what are those currents? Well, because they're all in parallel, right? It's good, they're all at the same voltage. So that will be the same, but the resistances will be different. Okay. Now, right, what is the R equivalent? It's going to be the V divided by um, the current, right? So if I divide this by current, Okay. All right, that's what we get, okay, for parallel. Now, yeah, if all of those were, impedances, all I would have to do is put Z1, Z2, Z3, all right? And so that would be the same, 
right? Now, um, just as a quick shorthand, right? If you have two things in parallel, right? There is a shorthand, right? Um, but this only works for two things. If you have more than two, you have to use that equation. All right. So this is kind of an important one to, to remember. Okay. And really, we're not learning anything more except we're changing the letters from R to Z. All right. And so um, Well, now we see that there's resistors and capacitors, right? So we're going to have to use Z equivalent, right? So what is Z equivalent? Well, we can, we don't actually have to send in a current and, and figure things out um, uh, by writing equations. We can just notice what's in series and what's in parallel and then keep reducing the circuit, all right? That's just to say what it is. So if that's a resistance, that's going to be ZR, and there's no other resistances, so I can just label it that. That'll be ZC. We'll calculate it later. That'll be ZL1 and ZL2. All right. So what is the hmm. Impedance, so Nick writes, uh, the Z are for resistors plus the tiny natural resistance of wires and components. Hmm. So that's kind of a deep question, um, but let me, not to get too far off, a resistance, right? An ideal resistance, the impedance of a, is just resistance, okay? There's no inductance, there's no capacitance. But a real resistor will have some capacitance, you call it parasitic, you don't want it. And it will have some inductance that you actually don't want, right? And so in fact, the resistor has inductance, it has a capacitance. And so there would be um, some energy storage going on in here, right? And so actually we can start with this example, right? So what is the equivalent impedance of, of this, right? Well, there's my A and this is my B. I can kind of draw a wire here. And now instead of my ohm meter, I have to use an impedance meter, right? So these two are in parallel, right? So I can redraw them. I can redraw it. Here's, here's my inductance. And now I'm just going to put an impedance here. Now these are in parallel. So all I have to write is ZC in parallel with ZR, all right? And that's ZL. Now, this parallel combination is in series with this inductor. And so, and I'm just gonna change to a darker thing. So Z equivalent would be ZL plus ZC in parallel with ZR. Now, if the frequency is low enough, these, um, this goes to zero, and this goes to infinity so that basically you're left with ZR, all right? Now, 
in my open math, right, you would write the, you have to write the equation out. So you just put ZL plus ZC, you know, you have to write the multiply symbol, ZR, I'm just gonna put some parentheses there, uh, ZC plus ZR, right? Or you can use that parallel equation. My, my open math can figure out both, all right? So that's how you would enter it into my open math. But on like an exam or you're trying to figure it out, you just use the parallel thing, okay? So, um, but impedance, right? It just doesn't have to be purely resistive, a purely inductive or purely capacitive. It can actually be, right? Because this is a complex number and it's positive and pure, it's purely imaginary. But when I do the parallel combination of this, I'll have a real and an imaginary part, all right? We'll review the complex math uh, soon, okay? So anyway, for this maybe more complicated example, right? This, it comes in, so it's in series, but now it's got two paths to get from here to here. So these are in parallel, and then I get a series here, right? So this would be ZR because it comes in. Now I can just write plus ZC in parallel with ZL1 plus ZL2. Excuse me. Okay. So um, so on the homework, sometimes they will ask you just to write out that equation. You just can't use, there's no parallel symbol, right? So you have to write it out, all right? But that's about, you know, almost the most complicated thing you would see. Um, maybe you might see something like this. Okay. Well, this is in series, but then you have something else in series in parallel with something um, that's just by itself. So, right, that would be ZR, right? But then I have, let's call that R1, R2, C, and L. I have R2 plus ZC, right? But that whole term, is in parallel with ZL, okay? So it's just like I said, all these problems that you've done before where it was only resistances, it's all algebraically the same with impedances, okay? Uh, professor? Yes, sir. Um, how come R1 looks like um, uh, has a different symbol? Like it's not the uh, symbol. I'm drawn quickly. Oh, gotcha, all right. Okay. Um, I, over the summer, my drawing on the Wacom tablet skills degrade, and I'm, I'm sorry. All right. Um, I'll leave it at that. All right. So anyway, um, so if you look at the, So, oh, what I said. So, Glenn, what I mean by there isn't a parallel symbol in my open math. So, let's go to homework three. And what I mean by that. So here, you're just adding some imaginary numbers. Here, you're what? Multiplying them. Here, you're dividing them. Here, we're just we haven't gotten to this part yet. We're doing the algebra first, right? But here is a problem similar, right? So you can't say this plus this and then use that parallel symbol with this. You would have to do it out, do it out, all right? So what I'm saying is, I couldn't, and 
I could not answer, um, excuse me, enter this into my open math. I would have to put ZR, right? Then I would have to type in uh, Z, excuse me, R2 plus ZC times, you gotta, oops, times ZL, right? Then ZR2 plus ZC plus ZL. That's what you'd have to put into my open math. This parallel symbol, which of course exists, it doesn't exist in my open math. Did that answer your question? I think so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You guys got it. Great. So, um, so now you should be able to do that. Okay. Now, yeah. Um, when you're given, like, here's those resistances, here's this, here's, I mean, you're given the impedance, right? Then you got to do the complex math to actually calculate it out, right? And then you do that, if, you know, a few times. And then at the end, it's like, here's a frequency, here's all the values, you have to, um, calculate it, you know, come up with the equation and then actually calculate the impedance. All right. Um, so now the time has come. Okay. So ZR is just resistance. ZC, and I'm, now here's the thing. You, if you've had differential equations, this S comes from the Laplace transform, okay? If you haven't, just take my word for it that S really is, when we're talking about impedance, okay, is J, Omega and J, if you're not aware, is really the square root of minus one, which in math class they tend to use as I, but EEs like I for current. So we use J. All right. And omega, that's the frequency. Okay. And Omega equals two pi f. So this frequency is in hertz, right? This is in radians per second. All right. So let's just um, so if you recall, I said the input voltage or current are they're sine waves. So let's just have a quick review about what that means. All right, and I'm gonna, just gonna try to draw it, okay? Now, one thing with this analysis, right? You have a sine wave and now, in a purely mathematical world, that sine wave for these phasors to work has to have existed for all time, all right? So it's repeating. Now, the thing is, is, you know, we're talking about the beginning of the universe, before the beginning of the universe, okay? All time. Well, we know that things turn off and on. And what happens is, is you can, with experience, you know, you can realize that one second is effectively infinity. Sometimes a millisecond is effectively infinity. All right. So um, the amplitude, right, is that. So, you know, let's just say our function, our sine wave is some amplitude times sine 
right? Now, usually we put two pi f times t. So this is time domain, oops, right? Because this is how oscilloscopes work, right? If you were to look at this on a oscilloscope, from here to here, the repeating of it is the period, right? And the frequency is one over the period. But these uh, sines and cosines all work in radians per second. So we convert it with two pi, right? So really this whole thing is omega, right? So once you know the frequency, multiply it by two pi, and then multiply it by J, and now you have S. Now, sometimes there's a phase that's associated with it, and we keep it in degrees, right? And you can, and just as an example, I can have 10. I'm going to just draw a different color. I can have 10 sine 2 pi 100 hertz t plus 90 degrees. You'll see this. But here's the thing, right? These units don't match, all right? This is in degrees, right? When we multiply this out, right, the um, – you just get radians, not radians per second, you get radians. So you have degrees versus radians. Um, sometimes you'll see, yeah, pi divided by two, and then it matches. So sometimes if you're trying to do this by hand and you put in degrees instead of radians, um, you will get it wrong. It's just practicing engineers like to do it this way because 90 degrees is easier to write, all right? And they'll st and they say it in the textbook, but then you know if you miss it, it can cause you some confusion. All right. So so ZC equals one over SC. So for example, if C equaled 53 microfarads, micro, right, 10 to the minus 6, right, and the frequency equaled 60 hertz. Well, ZC would equal J 2 times pi times 60 times 53 micro, which would give me 50, okay? And here's the thing. You it's probably just best to remember that this will be minus 50J ohms. Um, but we can actually work on this um, when we uh, review our complex math. All right. So um, ZL right, would be SL um, if L equaled a milli Henry. Um, and I'm actually going to just switch. Right. If we did ZL, right, that's SL. If the frequency equaled, um, 60 hertz, and actually 10 micro Henry's is a better, maybe a more realistic number, right? We have J times two pi times 60 hertz times 
times 10 micro, all right? And um, I know now your exams this semester will be face-to-face, um, -face, so you'll be using a calculator, right? But um, when I'm at home, I tend to, uh, you know, I use Google Sheets or Python. So yeah, the frequency is 60. Um, So that's uh, 300, 376 radians. Now I'm gonna put in the inductance, not the capacitance, and that was 10 e to the minus six. And now I'm just gonna calculate the reaction, the reactance, excuse me. So that's really omega times, again, this is inductance, not capacitance, right? So this would be the reactance of the inductor, but the actual impedance would be um, 0.00377J, okay? Um, you know, so quite a big difference, right? Um, and right, as, Frequency goes up, impedance of the inductor goes down, and impedance of the capacitor goes up. Okay. So, um, So, so here, right, that's how you would calculate this problem, right? Um, and they even have written examples, okay, that I programmed. So that's ZL, that's ZC. We've gone over this, right? Um, and yeah, I've been kind of saving the complex math uh, for last, okay? But that's still quite a bit. So are there any questions so far? Um, I have a question, it's kind of backtracking a bit, but um yeah backtrack i just i'm i'm trying to understand like uh the idea of impedance uh, uh, I, I, I was one who asked that question earlier so is it is so impedance is like the net power drain so like with a resistor you have the, the like ideal power drain you would expect from it but then it it, it will drain a bit from the capacitance and the deductance is is that like is, is, is that all correct? Is that, am I like getting the concept correctly? Well, you're on the right track. Um, but, you know, uh, V equals IZ isn't actually about showing your, isn't power. We're, we're not actually calculating power. There's nothing being drained. The larger the impedance, right? If I force a current, the bigger the voltage or the bigger the voltage and the larger the impedance, meaning the voltage source, the bigger the impedance, the smaller the current, okay? So impedance, you could just think of as slowing the current down. Now, yeah, in a resistor, right, um, right, power equals the voltage times the current, all right? 
So, um, so uh, if V equals IR, I can write I squared R or V squared divided by R. And notice this is a real number, okay? So you're getting real power loss, okay? Now, when we talk about impedance, right? Yep, it's P, I, but now it's a sine wave. And you can still have power loss if it's a sine wave, all right? But okay, so so it's like it's just like a broader definition of res resistance then. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And but that makes you know, sense. The, what you bring up is actually, you know, it's important. Right. Um, but here's the thing. If the Z is a capacitor, right, like we calculated before, it was minus 50 J. Right. So I squared, whatever it is, times 50J. V, whatever it is, divided by 50J, right? This is just the source. It might have a phase, but really, this is purely imaginary, right? And so, in fact, there is no power loss in a purely imaginary thing. It's energy storage which maybe is a little bit more than you want from today. So if I had a resistance and a capacitance, right, um, how much the power being dissipated by that resistor is changing by frequency because how much current is flowing is changing with frequency due to the capacitor. But an ideal capacitor doesn't dissipate any power. Of course, a real capacitor has a resistance. Okay. So, um, so it's not entirely true, but again, ideal elements. But uh, did that answer your question? Yeah. And then there's okay. uh, one, one person in the chat who had a question. Uh, shoot. Oh, oh, there's one more question in the chat. Yeah, so can you show the inductance impedance example one more time? Okay. But what, I, but what I'm gonna say is, uh, what you mean by that is ZL equals what if F equals 100 Hertz and um, inductance equals one milli Henry. Is that what you want to see? Oh, you just, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, you just wanted this, you just wanted the numbers. Okay, sorry. Okay. So, um, yeah, we're getting closer and closer to having to do complex math. Um, so let's just uh, make two, let's just saw, call something A, and I'm just going to say that's 10 plus 10J, right? And this is Cartesian coordinates, right? And so let's, you know, everything is on the real number, uh, on the complex plane. This symbol sigma is just the real part. This is the imaginary axis. And a lot of times it's called omega, right? So sometimes what you'll see is sigma plus J omega. And so in this case, sigma would equal 10 and omega would equal 10, all right? And then there's sometimes a very useful thing. There's a function called re, which means take the real part of A. And so in this case, the real part of A is just sigma 
and that would be 10. There's another function, imaginary, which means take the imaginary part of A, which is equal to omega. Notice, not the J part. The J part is gone. These are, when you take the real part, you get a real number. When you take the imaginary function, right, you're getting a real number, okay? So that's just um, kind of a good definition. So A would be here, right? And that would be 10 and 10. What is the A? A is a made up vector right here. I'm making it up. Okay, all right. So now um, let's do, let's create another one and we'll call it B and that's gonna be 10, uh, minus 10. No, I'm just gonna do 10 plus, 10j, okay. So they happen to be equal, all right? So what is a plus b, right? Well, it's the real of a plus the real of b, right? Plus the imaginary of A plus the imaginary of B. And this works out to 10 plus 10, right? Plus 10J plus 10J or 20 plus 20J. So that J, right? It's just like a variable or something. You can't you know, you have to add apples to apples and oranges to oranges and imaginaries to imaginaries and reels to reels, okay? Which, um, and then if we just talk about summing, right? So if I subtracted B from A, well, then I would subtract 10 from 10 and get zero for a real. And then I would subtract 10J from 10J and get zero for imaginary, right? The um, the trickier part is maybe uh, multiplying and adding, uh, dividing. Now, there are equations for the multiplication and division of complex numbers in Cartesian coordinates. And that's actually how I programmed it in my open math, because you'll always get the right answer regardless. Uh, and, and I'll show you the pitfall. But really, it's a lot better to convert things into phasers, which I'm about to show you, okay? So let's just take a, you know, a, keeping it simple, right? So let's just say now A is equal to one plus J. And B is, uh, we'll keep it the same. All right, now we want A, oops, times B, All right? No, yeah. Um, you can, you know, you multiply this times this, you multiply this times this, you multiply this times this and add it to this times that. And you could work it all out that way. But, um, Really, it's better to turn it into magnitude and phase. So the magnitude of A, right, with the phase of A, right? Magnitude of B with the phase of A. And so really what you would do is you get whatever you calculate for the magnitude of A, you multiply that times 
the magnitude of B. And then for the phase, you add them. Phase A plus phase B. Okay. So what this means, we gotta, we have to convert these to magnitude and phase. Well, one, one, right? Well, that angle is um, 45 degrees, right? And the uh, hypotenuse is the square root of two, right? So now we have the square root of two for the phase of 45. And A and B are equal to each other. So it's the same thing, right? And so now you multiply the two magnitudes. So you just get two and then you add these um, phases. And so we get 90. All right. Now, what if, um, now another example for the division, I'm just gonna change it a little bit. Oh yeah, so right, Mike, um, thank you for pointing that out. So then to go back to Cartesian, right? This, this vector here, oops, right? It goes up two, not to scale, at 90. And so now there's no real component. And so that is just two J, all right? Yeah, thank you. Um, I forgot to mention that. Okay. So, A divided by B, one plus J, one minus J. Um, so, We convert that into magnitude. So that's square root of two. This, the magnitude is square root of two, right? This angle is, right, 45. And let's just, and here's the thing. I always try to draw these out so I don't make a mistake, okay? So I have, you know, one and one, that's 45. But here I have one minus one, that's minus 45. Now here the rule is, right, for the division, it's mag A divided by mag B phase A minus phase B, all right? So again, that's, you know, just becomes one. And now we have 45 um, minus minus 45, right? So we have one with an angle of 90, which 
yeah, what's a magnitude of one at 90? Well, there's my angle 90 and I'm going up by one unit. So that's my vector that way. Now, there's just some things about going back or um, I wanna talk about in calculating the phase angle, all right? Some gotchas, right? Right, so that's my vector A and it's got, you know, we'll just say one, one J, right? So what is, you know, what is the magnitude, right? It's the square root of the real of A squared plus the imaginary of A squared. And that's straightforward, but what's the phase, right? Well, that's the inverse tangent of the imaginary of A divided by the real of A. Still, you know, not a problem, right? However, A tan one divided by one also equals a tan minus one divided by minus one. So here's one, one, right? That's gonna give me 45 degrees. Here's minus one, minus one, and the arctan function, function will give me 45 degrees. So that's why it's always helpful to draw it out to make sure you're getting the, the right angle. Now there is a function in Excel and Google Sheets and Python called a tan two, and you would just put the, the real, oh, actually I got to double check. Hmm. A tan two is just means it's the two argument and it's the re it's the imaginary followed by the real, right? Sometimes even I have to look these up. So if you use the A tan two function, then it'll come out right, but it's still only good between positive 180 and negative 180. All right. So, um, so what can happen is is you're using your calculator and you're just using a tan, and you're totally getting the wrong phase. A tan two. I don't know if calculators have it, right? But still, it's always a good idea to plot this out so that you can, you know, go back and forth between polar and Cartesian, all right? And um, so really, right? So this is the, you know, we're adding and subtracting complex numbers, multiplying, right? Dividing, what is, how to calculate ZL for given parameters, how to calculate ZC for given parameters, right? How to type in the equation for an equivalent uh, impedance, right? And you have, um, so you find an equation and then you find a number, but it's in Cartesian, okay? And here you're just given it like 
ZX2 is minus 10 J, right? ZX1 is eight J omega, right? But then as you go along, um, you get R, L, and C and the frequency. So you have to calculate ZC, ZR, and ZL. And then, um, you know, you come up with your equation and calculate it and then enter it in. And yeah, each time you do it, it'll give you different numbers. And so you probably really do want to have like an Excel worksheet where you can check your work and you're not kind of doing things over and over again. All right. So you can uh, do that homework as many times as you want until the due date. Um, it should take the highest one. And if you want to practice after the fact, um, I'll show you that in a second. But the final problem here, okay, is yeah, it's, it's a little more complicated. And this time I have a source, right? And so these volt, the currents will be split up, right? Um, and so you'll have that source is going to equal all three of these currents. And in this case, the resistance is two, inductance, they give you the magnitude and the frequency. Okay. We're always assuming the phase is zero. All right. And um, so that's like, kind of the big problem to do at the end. Gives people a little bit of difficulty, so I made a video, all right? But that is, um, oh, sorry, Kylie, we're, we're a bit out of time and I got to scoot, um, but I will make the recording available, okay? So you should be able to uh, see it. And at least you'll know it's at the end. And so you can kind of just go to the end. All right. However, right, um, the textbook ha uh, has an appendix where it's, you know, the complex math is very detailed. OK. But sorry, I kind of ran out of time. And so um, before we go, you know, next class will be what, Tuesday? All right, let's just double check. Yep, because we don't, um, we don't get Labor Day off. So uh, we'll be there on the 31st. I really like to begin on time. Um, I do, like I said, I do record it, but um, so tell your friends to come. Oh, and I'm saying the next time, the next time we, oh God, I'm sorry, I'm really ahead of myself. No, no, there's class Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm really apologize, sorry. Um, like I said, I'm filling in and so um, my mind is a little bit distracted. No, classes are Tuesdays and Thursdays. I believe um, November 11th falls on a Thursday and Thanksgiving thaws on a Thursday and those are the two days we don't meet. Yes, okay. Uh, I understand, Andres, you're just kidding. All right, so uh, I do have to scoot. Um, listen, I'll just... I'll just put my email in the chat. So that's really probably the quickest way to get a hold of me. All right, so thank you. Uh, you know, feel free to ask. There's no such thing as a, you know, a dumb question, okay? Take care, everybody. Thank you, Professor. All right. Thank you, Professor. Care. All right. Hope to see you in the real world one day.